Hello everyone! In this control engineering and control theory tutorial, we will explain one very simple and effective method to discretize PID controllers. Okay, so let's start with the motivation. Usually, if you open most of the textbooks on control theory or control engineering, you will find that PID controllers are first explained either in the continuous time domain or in the Laplace complex domain. For example, a PID controller in the so-called parallel form in continuous time will have this form. Control input U of t, where U is the control signal and t is time, is equal to Kp, which is a proportional gain, multiplying the control error E of t. Then you have Ki, where Ki is the integral gain, multiplying an integral of the error from 0 to the current time t, e of tau, d tau, plus the derivative gain kd, multiplying the first derivative of error with respect to time. Over here, e dot of t is dt, d over dt of e of t. This is a continuous time representation of the PID control algorithm. However, we also have the so-called complex Laplace representation of the PID control algorithm. This representation is obtained by applying the Laplace transform to this equation. And as the result, we obtain capital U of S, where capital U is the Laplace transform of time domain signal U of T, and S is the Laplace complex variable, is equal to Kp multiplying capital E of S, where capital E of S is the Laplace transform of E of T, plus Ki multiplying E of S divided by S. This is obtained since the Laplace transform of integral is 1 over S, and plus we have over here Kd, multiplying S, multiplying capital E of S. We obtain this term since the Laplace transform of the derivative is S multiplying the Laplace transform. And that's it. These are the two standard representations of the PAD control algorithm or the PAD control equation. Now, what is the main issue if you would try to implement these two equations in a microcontroller or an FPGA? Well, you cannot implement continuous time or complex Laplace domain representations of the PAD control algorithm. This is because FPGAs, as well as the microcontrollers, work in discrete time. Consequently, in order to implement the PAD controller in a microcontroller or an FPGA, you need to discretize these two equations. And in this video tutorial, I will explain you a very simple method to discretize PAD controllers. This method will not rely upon advanced control theory and it will rely only upon finite differences method, which is a very basic method for approximating first, second, third derivatives of variables. First, we will explain the main idea of finite differences. The finite differences are based on discretization of the time axis. Time t is represented as a product of k multiplying h. Let's explain k and h. Over here, h is usually called as sampling period Another name for H is the discretization step, and K is usually called as a discrete time instant. Discrete time instant. Okay, what we did over here is that we have discretized the time axis. Let's, let us graphically represent that. Here's our time axis. It starts from zero, and this is time. Then, what we did over here is that we discretized time. 
Now we are looking at the time at the discrete time steps whose distance is actually sampling period. So we have zero, then we have h over here, then over here we have 2h, then we have 3h, and if we continue like this, we will arrive at k multiplying h, where again k is discrete time instant and h is a sampling period. Alternatively, we can simply omit h over here, and we can just have this. This will be now discrete time, start from zero, and this time over here will be simply one, this time over here will be simply two, this time over here will be simply three, this time over here will be simply k. Now, let x of t be an arbitrary variable or a function of time. Let us introduce a new notation for x of t taking into account this discretization. So, x of t, if we substitute t for kh, becomes x of kh. And instead of writing k multiplying h, we will simply denote this variable by x with the subscript of k. So whenever you see x or any variable with the subscript of k, this means that this is the variable at the time instant k times h, since we want to omit h over here. So let's see this notation over here. In the original notation, if we have x, we will have x of 0 over here, then we will have x of h over here, then we will have x of 2h over here, and over here we will have x of kh. However, instead of writing this, we will simply write x with the subscript 0, x with the subscript 1, x with the subscript 2, x with the subscript 3, and x with the subscript of k. And that's it. This is a new notation. Next, let's explain the main idea of the backward finite differences. Backward finite differences are used to approximate first, second, third, and higher order derivatives of continuous time variables. If we have our variable x or a function x that's a function of time, then the first derivative of x at a time instant t is approximated like this. It is approximated as x with the subscript k minus x with the subscript k minus 1 divided by h. Okay, so what's happening over here? We are approximating the derivative at the time instant t is equal to k times h like this. We are simply approximating by a ratio of xk minus, xk minus 1 divided by h. Okay, simple as that. So what's the graphical interpretation of this? We are basically approximating the first derivatives. So let's see this. If this is our time axis, and if this is our x of t, which can be a function that looks like this, we will simply take a point over here at the time instant k multiplying h, then we will take a point over here at the time instant k minus 1 multiplying h, and over here we will have x of k, and over here we'll have xk minus 1. Minus one. Here, always keep in mind the previously introduced notation. So what happen what's happening over here? We are simply approximating the first derivative in this point by a ratio of this part and this part. This part over here is precisely this part over here. And this thing over here is h. So let's write it down. This is xk minus xk minus 1, and this is h over here. And that's it. Now, from this triangle, you can see the following. 
If I now use a dash line to create a triangle, and here is our triangle, then we have that x dot of t, that is the derivative of this point, is actually approximated by tan or tangent of this angle alpha. Since from this figure we have the tan alpha is xk minus xk minus 1, let me just nicely write it down, divided by h. And that's the main idea. Let us again write the formula for practice. We have that x dot is approximately xk minus xk minus 1 divided by h. Okay, this is the first derivative. How about the second derivative with respect to time? How can we use this formula to approximate x double dot? Well, the idea over here is to recursively use this formula. So, by recursive application over here, we will have x double dot is approximated as xk dot minus xk minus 1 dot divided by h. Okay, and now again, we can recursively use this formula to substitute this term by this thing and to shift the time index to substitute this term. So, let's do that. We have over here. Now I will write it as something like this. I will have h in the denominator and instead of x, xk dot we will write, let's write it down like this, we will have xk minus xk minus 1 divided by h. And then we have minus over here. What do we see over here? Instead of this term, we can use this formula with the shifted time index. So we will have xk minus 1 minus xk minus 2 divided by h. And if we rearrange this formula and we group all, all the terms, we will have in the denominator we will have h squared and in the numerator we will have xk minus 2xk minus 1 plus xk minus 2 and that's it and by using the same principle you can obtain the higher order approximation such as the third derivative the fourth derivative etc however in this tutorial we will only need this term and this term over here okay so let's go back to our original pad control equation here it is and over here are two formulas we just derived now What's the problem over here? Well, we can obviously use the finite differences to approximate E dot. We can simply use this idea over here. However, over here we have an integral and we cannot directly apply these formulas. The trick over here is to differentiate this equation. That is, we will differentiate the PAD control equation. Let's see what we have as the result. If I take the first derivative of this equation, I will obtain that u dot is equal to kp multiplying e dot, that is the first derivative, and here is the trick. If I take the derivative of an integral, I will simply obtain the term underneath. So I will have plus ki multiplying e, and this is the trick for getting rid of the integral. And let's go further, plus we will have kd multiplying e double dot. And that's it. Now, we will simply apply the finite differences to this equation. So let's see what we will have. Instead of u dot, we can write u k minus u k minus 1 divided by h. Simple application of finite differences, nothing special, is equal to, let's see what do we have on the right-hand side. We have kp multiplying what? Multiplying the finite differences application or approximation of e dot. So we have ek minus ek minus 1 divided by what? Divided by h. Okay, then we have plus k 
ki and instead of e we will write simply as simply e of k and over here we need to use the second order finite differences to approximate e double dot so we will have kd multiplying h squared and over here we will have e k minus 2 e k minus 1 plus e k minus 2 and that's it next let's multiply this equation by h and let's see the result as the result i will get u k minus u k minus 1 is equal to if i multiply h by if i multiply this whole term by h i will simply obtain kp multiplying e k minus e k minus 1 what do I see over here? Then over here I will have h multiplying ki e of k. And over here I will have plus kd over h. Since h multiplying h squared is only a single h. And over here I will have this complete term e k minus 2 e k minus 1 plus e k minus 2. Now let us group the terms. We have that uk is actually equal to uk minus 1. And let's see what do we have multiplying e of k. I will add plus over here. Then I will open these brackets over here. And inside what I will have? I will have kp over here. Then over here I will have plus h multiplying ki this term over here and from this part over here i will have plus kd over h and this is multiplied by e of k uh-huh good let's now see what do we have multiplying e k minus one again i will do plus over here then i will open these brackets and let's see what do we have we have minus kp from this part over here. From here, we have minus 2 multiplying kd over h. And this is multiplying e k minus 1. What do we have next? Next, we have plus kd over h multiplying e k minus 2 and that's it this equation over here is actually the finite differences approximation of our PID control algorithm so let's analyze this equation to implement this equation in a microcontroller or an FPGA we need to store previous value of the control input we need to measure the current control error we need to have information from the control error at the previous time step k minus 1 and we need to have the information about the control error at the two times two time steps in the past that is we can implement this equation by using either a simple while loop or a simple for loop and this is how control algorithms are implemented in microcontrollers or FPGAs. We simply transform continuous time to the discrete time and we all actually obtain a finite difference equation and we just need to memorize either control input from the previous time steps and or control error from the previous time steps and that's it. Okay that's all for today. Thanks for watching.